Hello everyone, welcome back. Megan decides to chime in on racism since she is such a victim. Disclaimer, full disclaimer can be found down below if you click on the arrow where the description is. It gives you a little more information about what I talk about and other thoughts on my mind. I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel and set your notification bell. All content was found on a public domain, uh, domain using the Fair Use Fair Dealing Guidelines. Thank you. Let's get started. We all know, and I found this on Linda Laps, La, uh, La Hughes, um, Tumblr, Meghan Markle complains that Kate gets backing of the palace after the bad press. Of course, we knew when they were ready to speak out and um, say that they were going to file a lawsuit against the Tattler magazine for the article that they wrote. Uh, they misrepresented themselves, uh, getting the palace's permission to uh, use Kate on the cover and to say that it was going to be called Catherine the Great, when in fact what they do, and you all know this, I'm sure by now, that uh, they go in and they criticize Kate, her family, her mother, and that uh, she's complaining about um, the workload, which we all know that's not true. And I believe this was set up, and we know that this comes from Megan's camp, allegedly, that um, this was even printed. Exclusive, this is really a slap in the face. Bitter Megan complains that Kate Middleton snaps her fingers and gets backing of the palace after negative Tattler article while she is crucified by the media and received no support. That's an out and out lie. We know that the palace had backed her several times. The problem is Megan wanted to be in the press um, too much and things that she did became controversial and people started having an opinion about what she was doing, especially when it came to breaking royal protocol and trying to be the limelight. That's when the media turned on Megan when they saw the truth. Tadler confirmed on Monday that the Duchess of Cambridge's lawyers have sent legal letters to the publication in response to the profile of the Duchess Catherine the Great. The legal action is unusual for the royal family, causing much speculation that the royal family's relationship with the press could be set to change drastically. The Duke and Duchess have previously taken legal action in only the most extreme cases, such as when a French magazine published topless photos of the Duchess, and I believe that was when they were on their honeymoon. The suggestion that Kate is exhausted and feels trapped and is unhappy about her workload is at the nub of the complaint, she added. She is working harder than ever at her request so the idea she resents the workload isn't the case. I think it's a warning shot to the media that the palace won't tolerate certain allegations. And I believe that the royal family and, of course, William and Kate are aware that the Tattler magazine um, publisher and the person who wrote the article are friends of uh, Miss Marone's. Miss Maroney's uh, sister-in-law and her connection as she works there. This is Kate out uh, doing a walkabout. Kate and William always work. They do the right thing. They keep their head down. They're not in the media as much. They don't seek the limelight. That was something that Megan always did. And these were the claims that um, outraged them. It was furious about the larger workload, which that comment was never made, and how tough it was, and that uh, William and Catherine really wanted to be hands-on parents, and the Sussex effectively have uh, thrown their three children under a bus. That she's the uh, mummy, meaning uh, Kate's mother, that William never had. These are all hurtful things. And, and this, again, just goes to show what Megan had put in there recently about uh, one of her friends, Father David Foster, being the father that uh, Harry never had. These are just hurtful, spiteful things that someone does when they're unhappy and things aren't going their way, so they lash out at others that um, are happy. The Middleton family uh, will always close ranks and um, and they will band together when something like this happens. They give her lots of love and support, and also William and their grandchildren. She doesn't act any different as any other grandparent would act. 
That's Jessica Maroney's sister-in-law. She's the one that um, works at Tattler Magazine and we believe had Anna Pasterak um, do the article. And if I said her name wrong, I apologize. Again, Jessica Maroney, Ben Maroney, her sister-in-law and her husband. Arthur, who wrote controversial Tattler article claiming Kate Middleton felt trapped and exhausted, is the friends with sister-in-law of Meghan Markle's BFF, Jessica Maroney, sources claim. And again, that's all them out to eat, and I've shown this before. And if you'll see Megan, and to Megan's left is Corey Viatello, who was the chef that she was dating when she started ha dating and having an affair with Prince Harry. William and Kate, again, are doing their day-to-day -day work, keeping up with the different charities that they represent, and being mom and dads. Today, I'm sure you all saw this, uh, that it was posted, I think, on the uh, Queen's Trust uh, Twitter, I know I saw it there. And who are the magazines that are praising her? Of course, it's Harper Bazaar. Uh, Duchess Meghan gives a powerful graduation address to her high school and uh, also talks about George Floyd, who is the man who was um, killed at the hands of a white police officer that should have never have happened. And it's such a disgrace. And I feel for Mr. Floyd's family and those people who cared about him and everybody that was hurt by what's happened. And I do hope that the people who are writing will stop. Peaceful um, protests are okay, but uh, to do what they're doing, they're using this as an excuse, I believe, to go out and loot, to steal, to do things that are not what his family has asked for. They've asked for prayers, they've asked for peace, and they've asked for people to help in um, positive ways. So then, of course, what magazine is she in? People Magazine. Meghan Markle gives emotional address to her former high school. Of course, this is People Magazine. And um, she has those certain ones that she talked to that uh, that praise her, that print articles for her whenever she's uh, it's needed. Now, I don't know who Voltor is, but Meghan Markle addresses Black Lives Matter in high school graduation speech. And this was, uh, here we go. And Listen Breonna on. Taylor's life mattered, and Philando Castile's life mattered, and Tamir Rice's life mattered. And so did so many other people whose names we know and whose names we do not know. Stefan Clark, his life mattered. When I was a sophomore in high school, I was 15, and um, as you know, sophomore year is the year that we do volunteer work, which is a prerequisite for graduating. And I... Sorry, that's as much as I can watch. And you'll notice there that um, Megan looks as if she's about to cry and that um, I believe this is an acting stunt and she's trying to intertwine this with the uh, so-called racism that she said that she endured at the hands of the uh, British press. So I don't want to take away from what happened to this young man and his family, but I don't believe that rioting is the way to go about bringing positive change. And I'm not going to read that. And it just says that she's spoken out and also included this, uh, the killing of George Floyd's family or his death. Megan, Harry, William, and Kate address Black Lives Matter. Here's how. Now, of course, people are stating this, but they didn't do it. They're saying that Megan did it in this speech and that they were working together. It says the initiatives and organizations backed by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are taking a stand in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, William and Kate did their own thing. Megan and Harry did their own. The Queen's Commonwealth Trust is which of which uh, Queen Elizabeth is a patron. Prince Harry and uh, is president and Meghan is vice president. I don't think they should uh, have any of these charities in the UK that they uh, represent, at least not as um, president and vice president. They don't live in the UK. They don't represent the people of the UK. And um, the way they're choosing to live their lives is not someone who wants to bring about a positive message. They are um, just two terrible people. 
Now, who, what do we have? People Magazine, Outrage and Anguish, American Tragedy. But then People is the one that also talked about what Meghan Markle's doing. There's nothing wrong to bringing about um, awareness and writing a story on this terrible uh, tragedy, but um, they need to be careful in the way that they do it because um, sometimes they're sending the wrong message that makes things worse, not better. The Queen's Commonwealth Trust. Young people are vital voices, voices in the uh, fight against injustice and racism around the world. As a global community of young leaders, we stand together in pursuit of fairness and a better way forward. Silence is not an option. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. And of course, Megan is promoting herself on the uh, Twitter account of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. And they're saying that she sends a message about racism and talking to the people um, who graduated from the, her high school. <coughs> if you'll notice under the picture, what magazine is she in now? Essence, which is traditionally a black magazine. Excuse me, so Megan always brings herself forward when there's a chance to, you know, say, hey, I'm black and I'm proud of it and I'm sorry we've seen that over and over, but she doesn't date black men, she doesn't marry black men, she doesn't socialize or have friends that are uh, black men, they're all white and she considers herself a white woman and uh, to do this, I don't know how black people can have any respect for her to only want to represent them when it gives her a chance to be in the press. Heads Together campaign, William and Kate are involved with, and they're the ones talking about um, this. And on their uh, Heads Together account, they retweeted from Com, the Com Zone. We're standing with the black community today and every day. We was, must make sure racism is never tolerated. Listen to marginalized voices and commit to reaching those communities that need us. And then it gives a number. If you need to talk, we're here for you every day from 5 to midnight, no matter what. And also, they've um, retweeted the mix. We stand with Black Lives Matters and fight against systematic racism to the young, black, and BLGBTQIA community. Your mental health matters and is a priority for, for the unforgettable grief and trauma you have had to experience. Our services are free and are here, and you can reach them at that number. Now, these are some of the things that... Um, that I found. I want you to see the articles. I'm not going to take the time to go into them. It says, smear campaign against Meghan Markle with race, racist undertones. Some dirty examples. And they aren't smear campaigns. And there were one or two people um, that I read articles or saw uh, something that they had posted that I thought uh, did have racial undertones. But um, for the most part, and I would say 99%, most of the people have not written about Megan in a racist way. They've written about her just like they would anyone else and if Meghan Markle was white. Racism helped drive Prince Harry and Meghan Markle out of the UK and away from the royal family. So what do we do? Now we're all tapping this together because of her little speech. And now they're saying that it was racism that drove them out. So she's thinking she'll get the uh, sympathy and support of people to say, I know what you... Uh, have endured here because I've endured it myself being married to my husband. Sean Hannity, I don't know if you watch him on Fox, Sean Hannity's producer, Meghan Markle, was very uppity. They had tried to bring her in on a um, an interview and the producer's use of the term comes in mid-discussion about whether racism drove Prince Harry and the biracial Meghan Markle out. announcement that they were quitting as senior members of the royal family. Questions immediately arose over racism, um, whether racism from the UK media or the royal establishment had driven out the couple away. Excuse me for my mispronunciation. The Duchess of Sussex has a white father, an African-American mother, early coverage in the UK tabloids and racist um, over times with stories talking about Megan's exotic DNA or describing her Los Angeles roots as almost straight out of Compton. And these were examples of the articles that were very mean and hurtful. But as recently as November, a British TV host described Megan as uppity. It appears that some of her overtones have crossed the Atlantic, at least in one corner of the American media. 
Producer went on to say, yeah, she is very uppity, McLaughlin said, cutting in. She is one of those liberal elitists you know. The queen hosted the meeting at her Sandringham, a country estate, this week, and she was talking about when this happened with Harry, Prince Charles, Prince William. Meghan was reportedly invited to call in to the meeting from Canada, where she is currently living. In the end, the Sussex decided it wasn't necessary for her to join. <clears throat> Excuse me. Buckingham Palace said in a statement, according to People, I don't believe anything, according to People magazine, I don't think she was invited to attend. To Hannity, Meghan's decision uh, to not join the meeting was disrespectful to the Queen, who is Harry's 93-year-old grandmother. To McLaughlin, Meghan's failure to phone in was an indication of what's wrong with liberals, among other things. McLaughlin brought up Meghan's former career as an actress on TV's Suits. She was one of those liberals who doesn't work, McLaughlin said. Her hardest job has been reading lines that other people have written for her. McLaughlin then cited UK reports that the Queen's British taxpayers and Prince Charles, Duchy of Cornwall estate, have paid for the couple's Frogmore Cottage home, Meghan's wardrobe for official appearances, and other expenses relating to the royal duties. You get money from taxpayers, McLaughlin said. You get money from people who pay your way. You live in someone else's house. You're not paying for anything. The hardest job she will ever have is motherhood, McLaughlin added, and God help her. This is the hardest job. I hope she does a great job with her child. As HuffPost pointed out, McLaughlin's use of uppity carries racist overtones when it was applied to people of color. I don't know how calling someone uppity and the way they act, it means they're better than someone else or they act better that that has anything to do with the color of a person's skin, and I'm tired of everything being called racism. The Atlantic wrote that uppity is a term racist Southerners historically used for black people who didn't know their place. That's, I don't care. That could have been used anywhere at any time, and it has nothing to do with that. And you're going to tell me because one person or one area might have uh, said that or used that word for that cause does it mean that everybody in the rest of the world has to be uh, aware of that and that that's what it means to them? <clears throat> in fairness, a lot of people don't know for sure whether uppity is racist. The Atlantic reported for an analysis headlined, Yep, uppity is racist. The Atlantic said the definition of the word in urban, and I don't have the rest of that, I'm sorry. Let's go to exactly what Oxford Dictionary um defines the word racism. It was first defined by the Oxford English Dictionary, second edition, 1989, as the theory that distinctive human characteristics and abilities are determined by race. The same dictionary term racism, a synonym of racialism, belief in the superiority of a particular race means you're better than they are. So, I'm sorry, that does not mean what uppity has nothing to do with that and it doesn't have racial um, undertones. Martin Luther King quotes, and I'll read a few, we must accept finite disappointment but never lose infinite hope. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. Forgiveness is not an occasional act, it is a permanent attitude. So if all the people that are out there rioting and uh, looting, burning down buildings in their own communities would think back to a man who gave his life and died trying to give equality to all people, but to do it the right way. He was a Christian man. He used the Bible to live by, and he wanted to go about bringing about change the right way. Going out and doing what these people are doing is not going to bring about any kind of change. It's just going to be a detriment to their communities. Change does not roll in on wheels of in inevitability, but comes through continuous struggle. Love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. One of the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not kill. The police officer killing Mr. Floyd was a terrible act, but it was something that he himself did. He, what he did should not be representative of the rest of the people who are police officers or public servants. 
possibly those other men that were there that didn't do anything about it. He could have been their uh, superior commander and didn't know, they didn't know how to uh, react to it. Um, I don't think that they had any malicious intent for the man to be hurt. I don't know. I can't say I wasn't there. I've seen the video, but um, I think that's up to a court to decide. Let the courts do what they're supposed to do and bring about justice and go back, stay in your home, social isolate, and try to give to uh, organizations that um, that will help Black Lives Matters. There's other ways that you can help. Speak out positively on social media, but you don't need to go out and do these acts that you're committing. The Ten Commandments were reminded. Number six, thou shalt not kill. Number eight, thou shalt not steal. So the people that are going out and looting and burning down buildings and stealing merchandise from these stores that are causing those people who work there to lose their jobs and uh, to um, hurt those companies and perhaps put some out of business forever, you're wrong. You're just as wrong as the police officer who killed Mr. Floyd. How do we uh, love one another in a Bible verse? Ephesians Chapter 4, verse 2, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Chapter 1, or excuse me, First Peter's chapter 4, verse 8, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. The Dalai Lama, when you talk, you are only repeating what you already know. But if you listen, you may learn something new. Megan, you should listen to that quote from the Dalai Lama and um, maybe take stock in yourself. The beautiful poet Maya Angelou, hate. It has caused a lot of problems in this world, but it has not solved one yet. Maya Angelou. Nelson Mandela. No one is born hating another person because of the color of their skin or his background or his religion. People must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes more naturally to the human heart that it's opposite. When we raise our children, we need to raise them to love people of all color. We need to raise them with a positive message that they need to go out and work hard, have integrity, uh, be of good character, and treat everyone equally. A lot of people are raised with a different belief, and they're raised with a chip on their shoulder, and they're raised being taught about racism and that they're living in it, and if they don't get what they want, then um, it was racism, and that's not true either. Dr. Martin Luther King, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate can drive out our hate, but only love can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate, but only love can do that. So if we have love for the people, pray for the people who have done wrong and committed these atrocious acts, then we can band together and try to change things in the future so that no other police officer ever does that <clears throat> to another uh, human being ever again, no matter their color, but especially if they're a black. And Frank, dead people receive more flowers than the living ones because regret is stronger than gratitude. So if you have to live with regret for what you've done, it's far more stronger. It's when people die and you have regrets, things that you've said, things that you haven't said. Think about it. Abraham Lincoln, one of the presidents of the United States, those who deny freedom to others deserve it, not for themselves. So for what this officer did, I hope he rots in jail for the rest of his life. I hope the other officers, if they're found guilty, um, have to pay a uh, prison term just as well. President John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. 
That was one of his famous quotes. So he's saying, don't just expect other people to bring about change. Get involved and help your country bring about change. But do it in a positive way, in a uh, a quiet, respectful way, so that people will actually listen to your words and what you have to say and try to bring about uh, change in a positive way. Queen Elizabeth II quotes, When life seems hard, the courageous do not lie down and accept defeat. Instead, they are all the more determined to struggle for a better future. Think about that for a moment. If people stand up and do right to change laws and affect positive change, then they can bring about a better future for everyone. <coughs> Queen Elizabeth. It has always been easy to hate and destroy. To build and cherish is much more difficult. To what greater inspiration and counsel can we turn than to the imperishable truth to be found in his treasure house, the Bible? Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it um, gave you something to think about. If you like the video or my others, I hope that you will subscribe to my channel. Again, I appreciate your tuning in. I hope everyone is having a truly good day. And I wish you all love, peace, and happiness.